Welcome back. Last time we got it started and it idled. Compression seems to be higher. We'll do a test now to see if it's decreased. I have a suspicion the ring will wear down fast and the gap will increase and we'll lose compression again. Thank you for all the nice comments. Thank you for all the donations. I must say that I'm definitely not a genius. I'm just obsessed with two strokes. I know a lot about two strokes, but there's a lot more I don't know. And that's kind of why I like it, why I, why I haven't lost interest in two strokes. Let's check that compression. It doesn't really matter at this point. We know that it will start and run and rev with this massive crankcase. We know the ring can seal and we know there's an improved ring in the making. Let's do the test and see what it looks like. And my old rings haven't arrived yet, so I can't fill it up with water and do more testing safely. Compression remains the same, 75 psi, which means we can continue testing as it is, as soon as I get those O-rings. Let's start working on some exhaust pieces.
Well, that was nerve wracking. I feel like I'm getting a hang of it now. So this one isn't much to write home about. Neither is this, but it's not that bad. Like I'm so used to MIG welding and you just travel along, but here you have to wait and you have to watch the puddle. And what I thought was the puddle isn't actually the puddle. It hadn't formed properly yet when I understood that it has to form properly. Things started working my way. And it's slow, much slower than what I what I expected, kind of. Looks like hell compared to Mr. Mortensen's work, but it should be fine. Yeah. The pipe is pretty much done, not the best welding <laughs> here, but uh, it turned out better on the actual pipe and this is just a, like a temporary tube. We'll have to weld on some ears for the, for the mounting flange too. There's a guy making that adapter piece from the cylinder to the pipe for me, more on that later, but I'll have to wait until that's ready before I weld on some eyes here, just to see where they need to be. Right. Notice the nickel plating stuff I've got here. It's not electroplating nickel, it's electroless nickel. Electroless nickel, when heat treated, is almost as hard as hard chrome. And I was thinking maybe we should do a test on the rings. It also deposits a really even surface. Needs no machining after plating. Works without electricity versus my electroplating setup. It needs to be hot though, I think it's about 90 degrees Celsius, so, um, and it needs to stay at that specific temperature for a couple of hours. So I think the best option is to buy one of those sous vide cookers, you know, where you slow cook food for a long time in a water bath. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do, see if we can make these rings harder for testing purposes. It's Sunday today in Norway, had it been any other day of the week, I would have bought that uh, cooker and performed the test. Before we end this video, here's the, my injection test bench for the injection setup. I haven't run it since that video where I uh, built it and, uh, and tested the injection setup. I'm not sure if the pump works anymore. <laughs> I did purchase it, but it's been sitting now and I I think we should do uh, like we'll end this video with a test to see if this pump works. Otherwise, I'll have to order a new one. 
and purge it better next time I let it sit for a long while. Kind of pessimistic thinking, of course it works. Just making a vining noise. See here? If you listen closely, you can hear it just whining. So, uh, methanol and nitromethane probably killed it. I didn't purge it good enough last year. Not strange really, it's not meant for methanol and definitely not for nitromethane. Yeah, I'll research my options, but I think I'll just get another one and uh, see if I can keep it alive. If they last long enough for uh, a week at Bonneville, that's okay. See you next time.